And here we meet on the eighth anniversary of the attacks on the 43 students and the forced disappearances. For the last year and a half, Kate Doyle and Ani Yancey Diaz-Cortez have been working to expose the corruption of the Mexican government on a crime that happened eight years ago, when 43 young men disappeared without a trace after coming under attack by police. On the night of September 26, 2014, about 100 young college students from the Ayotzinapa Rural Teachers College were riding along buses. They stopped in a city called Iguala, where they were barricaded by police. As soon as they were barricaded, there were gunshots, unceasing gunshots and, and, and gunfire. One of our compañeros tried to get out and, and do something to move the police cars, and, and that's when the first one of us was shot. I saw my compañero on the ground, lying in a pool of blood, convulsing, and, and the, the police just never stopped shooting. By the end of the night, six people were dead and 43 of these young men disappeared without a trace. The government steps in and instead of solving the case, the government proceeds to fabricate a fake story. Life-size cutouts of the Ayotzinapa College students are on display at the Holland Building as a grim reminder of what went down on the night they commandeered the wrong bus, which had a shipment of heroin bound for Chicago. When they were talking about uh, the, the, the code name they used for heroin. Wait, what was the code word for heroin? I, I can't remember what they used in this Okay, in the, in the court document they say, is your aunt arriving tonight? Yeah, the, I think the ants were the buses. But so we knew from the codes they were using that uh, heroin loads were coming up in buses and that bulk cash, uh, millions and millions of dollars, was going back down uh, via the same method. And so one of the things we thought together would be just as an experiment, can we reach other audiences who might never have read about this case, who might not know anything about Mexico, uh, who might never have heard of the 43? Can we find some different medium, some different way of, of voicing this case. And, and that's kind of how the podcast came about between us. The two women interviewed family members and others, exposing the corruption that took place as the government and military attempted to cover their tracks. They were coming out with uh, fragments of bones. I remember very distinctly, I saw this fragment of bone that was very different from the rest, because it was way bigger and it was almost not burned. It immediately caught my attention. They figured out that the government had planted evidence, including one of the bones of the students. They had fabricated lies. They basically forced confessions with torture out of people to confess to the crime. Since that time, arrests have been made. And that group of investigators has now found two, the remains of two more students has effectively, you know, proved the cover-up on the part of the previous government, including pointing to the military, and has had over a hundred arrests, including, you know, police officers and soldiers. The investigation has revealed more than just words or stories on the radio. It has become a mission to find loved ones. And because the investigation is ongoing and there's been so many different iterations, it just becomes more um, compelling and gripping to continue to report on it. And of course, as you document with the families and with the parents, and in this case with um, the mother that I followed, Doña Cristi, I'm ever more invested in, in her search for the truth and her search for her son. While those who came to hear more about their findings were shocked by what happened, they also were grateful for the truth that is finally being revealed. You know, I think it's events like these that help a lot, bringing more information to people. You know, and these journalists, it sounds like they've dug up a lot. They presented a lot. You know, they talked about, you know, the whole cover up with the former attorney general just recently. It just barely came up. And Doyle believes the reason to look at a case like this is to understand the impact of the policies that are crafted even here in the U.S. and why they don't work anymore. I think the Ayotzinapa case is one of the many, many times that we have an opportunity to question a, a policy and a strategy that has been ongoing for more than 40 years and that has failed. It seems like um, 
the war on drugs um, has really had some unforeseen consequences. And I think um, one of the comments that was made during this presentation was that the United States and Mexico and their drug enforcement agencies haven't ever gotten together to kind of recalibrate, and I, I believe that was a phrase that was used, you know, refigure out what to do because clearly what's, what's happening isn't working on either side of the border. And the families of those students just want justice. You know, the mothers and the fathers of the Ayotzinapa students are not demanding an end to the drug war. I mean, that's beyond their purview. They're demanding justice for the disappearance of their boys, and they're demanding the bodies of their sons. But I do think that the end result leaves you with having had an experience through their experience. And if um, this podcast can convey even a little bit of that, then I feel like I've, I've done my job. There's actually a phrase in Spanish for that, of how you contribute to your society, to your world. It's called un, un granito de arena, one grain of sand. Can you put one grain of sand in and help change things? And I feel like the podcast is our grain of sand, but, but all this whole time we have always been led by the mothers and fathers. They are the ones who are on the vanguard of demanding change. They are the ones to identify where the obstacles still lie. And they are the ones who, after we are finished with our podcast, will continue to fight for this case and for justice for their sons. From Utah Tech University, Melissa Anderson Community Education News.